when he got out of bed for a second and i was like that doesn't look like his bedroom and then she sat up i was like whoa whoa, whoa. what i mean no. i feel like at some point they must have had a conversation about it but like i'm sorry you Man, i've i've had people break up with me for less than that so. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Art of Costume Blackcast. I'm Elizabeth Joy Glass. And I'm Spencer Williams. Hello, Elizabeth. Hey, Spencer. What's going on? Taxes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was not what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> Had to deal with that today. <laughs> taxes. I did one all right. I actually like doing taxes. Is that weird? I had income from two different states, so that oh, wasn't fun. That'll do it. Wait, how many states do you live in? I live in one, but my the full-time job that I just quit was in Delaware. Oh, really? Yeah, because I live in Pennsylvania, but it's like, like 15, 20 minutes to Delaware. It's not that long. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow, we're still learning so much about each other. Yeah, I worked in Wilmington. Oh, no pass, way. I would pass by Biden's house all the time. That's so you could sweet. tell if he was he, if he was home because there was like extra security on the route. <laughs> oh, how did I not know this? I don't know. I, don't know. I probably just didn't talk about it. <laughs> um, I've just been, you know, hanging out, watching lots of Peacemaker. I'm still really obsessed with that show. Ooh. Um, so going into what we're about to talk about feels like a whole different world. <laughs> I know I started out yesterday. First, I was watching the, um, the, the secrets of Playboy. Okay. The, the TV show all about like the behind the scenes of what was going on with like Hugh Hefner and like the playmates at the Playboy mansion. Right. So I started out the day watching that. Then I started watching the first episode of Pam and Tommy. <laughs> and then I was like, well, I guess I'll watch West Side Story now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what a weird twist. Uh, yeah, right? I feel the same way. I was watching The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, Peacemaker, and I was like, well, time to watch West Side Story. We're going to a rumble. We're going to a rumble. We're going to a rumble. I'm ready. <laughs> okay i'm glad you're ready <laughs> <laughs> elizabeth has taxes brain i have to bring her back to life i know i do i we had problems i had to like pay TurboTax more money to actually talk to a person oh no it was a whole thing it was a whole thing but it's over now it's over now and we watched west side story <laughs> <laughs> west side story how exciting i know a oscar nominee an Oscar nominee. I've never seen West Side Story before on stage oh. or the original movie. Oh, my God. So all I knew is that it was based off Romeo and Juliet, which I think I shared my opinions about Romeo and Juliet before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Elizabeth's not a fan of the Romeo and Juliet story. I, I'm not. But um, I liked the Romeo and Juliet story better in this context. Mm -hmm. than just the Romeo and Juliet story. <laughs> well, I've seen West Side Story a couple times. Um, I don't know how I forgot how the film ended. <laughs> like, why am I still shocked right now? <laughs> I've seen it multiple times. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it was funny because, like, I had heard a bunch of the songs and stuff, like, all out of context. Like, yeah. I had no idea I feel pretty was from West Side Story. I had no idea. <laughs> and then her monologue at the end with the gun, like I heard like in acting classes, like that's like one of the, the like monologues you learn. Right. Is that final monologue of hers. And I was like, oh, that's what this is from. <laughs> yeah. West Side Story is a staple. So we should just jump into this because I'm really excited. Yeah. Give us that summary. All right. Well, an adaptation of the 1957 musical West Side Story explores forbidden love and a rivalry between the Jets and the Sharks, two 
teenage street gangs of different ethnic backgrounds. I've been going back and forth on this. I didn't think they're teenagers. They're not teenagers. They're young adults. I, but I think literally everywhere I'm going, it's saying teenage, though. So I don't know. I think <laughs> maybe the Jets are teenagers. But if they're trying to say the Sharks are teenagers. <laughs> I don't know, Elizabeth. Like, I, I, <laughs> I think the, like, the Sharks are like young, like people in like their 20s, early 20s. And then I think the Jets are mostly guys in their early 20s and then like some teenage boys i hope so all the descriptions i keep reading <laughs> keep saying teenage though because <laughs> otherwise this is just like far more concerning <laughs> uh well if you're all listening please let us know <laughs> are we talking about children right now or because <laughs> like what uh what's his name um Bernardo's definitely like 20 something. They're trying yeah. to say he's a teenager. Like, I don't, I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know either, but it's besides the point. Let's get it, into some behind the wardrobe. It facts. is besides the point because the wardrobe of this was phenomenal. Yes. Going behind the wardrobe, we have director Steven Spielberg. Wow. Our first Spielberg. Our first Spielberg, known for many amazing films that fill our childhoods, <laughs> and costume designer Paul Taswell. His, yes, Paul. Yes. Love this man. His notable works are the, col the Color Purple stage play, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, The Wiz Live, for which he received a Emmy win in 2015, Jesus Christ Superstar Live in Concert, for which he got a Emmy nomination in 2018, and our favorite, Hamilton, for which he won a Tony. Uh, of course. I mean, this guy is the man. He brought Hamilton. Why haven't we done Hamilton on this podcast? We, we need to do we Hamilton. We need to do that at some point. We're going to talk about that after. He also did Harriet, which I almost forgot about. Yeah, which is, that's a great film. I mean, Paul Taswell is the man. He is just the best. I love him so much. He's also a super sweet, kind guy. So He seems... I watched some of the interviews he did, and he just seems very, very genuine. And I love that he designed the wardrobe from a very genuine spot. He was really looking to create a authentic depiction of the 19... 50s New York. Uh, he said in an interview with LA Times that he was thinking of the contrast and aspiration for the different communities. With the Latinx community, they are dressing more consciously fashion forward than the Jets are. The Sharks have to try harder. That is part of feeling like an outsider in America. You try harder to represent yourself to be as put together as possible. So you garner respect. So he was really like trying to convey what these individuals want out of their life. And for the Jets, he really took inspiration from Bruce Davidson's photos of gangs in the 1950s, which I had not heard of this photographer before, but wow, his photographs are beautiful. And I understand why he took inspiration for the jets it's like exactly how these kids were dressing yeah beautiful photographs i kind of thought when you put these up that they were photos from like the original west side story or something mm -mm. so that's super cool yeah and the these are the points he was starting from very authentic depiction of you know the jets gang from the 1950s and trying to convey that aspiration of the latinx community and those are our behind the wardrobe facts, Spencer. Are you ready to just jump into this after our break? I'm so ready. I've been thinking about this all day. Let's get to it. I'm ready to dance. <laughs> we'll be right back. Elizabeth, are you ready to rumble in the streets? We have a lot of great costumes to talk about. 
I am definitely ready to talk about the costumes. <laughs> You're not ready to fight? No. No. Okay. Look at this sweater. Do you think I want to get blood on this this white sweater? No. Dang, who is talking about blood? All right, let's get into it. Oh. Did you um, watch the movie? Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> All right. So we open on some quick gang violence, like right out of the bat. I thought it was so funny. I hadn't seen West Side Story in such a long time. So seeing this new one, I just love watching the Jets just kind of like <laughs> strut around in the streets and like dance fighting. I was like, oh, really? like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is so great. I like <laughs> was not prepared for this and I was like, what what is happening? <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> like I knew it was a musical, so I assumed it would be like dancing all the time, but I was just like, I don't know, I wasn't I wasn't ready for the, the Jets moves. Yeah. I just think America needs more like dance fighting in the streets. Like I wanna be walking around Los Angeles just, you know, like snapping our fingers and skipping into the street. You know, it, it's just it was fun do you think la drivers are going to stop for those people there's how many people are going to be <laughs> well, hit? they did and they did in new york city so maybe they'll try it out here i don't know you know how many people get hit by cars in new york city every single year this was not oh an my... accurate depiction <laughs> <laughs> oh dear <laughs> let's talk about the jets <laughs> <laughs> well the jets uh these little annoying punks they do look great yeah they do they Look dirty, but in a very cool, like, James Dean way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we have the leader of the Jets, Riff, played by Mike Faced. Man, he is just, like, jeans, uh, undershirt, open tee. He doesn't care what anybody thinks of him. Paul Taswell said to the LA Times... The Jets, who claim white European heritage, are more comfortable and casual in how they dress. They're the only group I dressed in denim and jeans. It's an icon of America. So he was really trying to make them like the white stereotypical young adult teenager of the 1950s, who was just... Getting into trouble for getting into trouble's sake. <laughs> I love their costumes. And I'm going to probably bring this up a hundred times, but Paul Taswell is like a master of color. He really yes. knows how to, um, you know, create story with color. And I think he starts right away with the Jets. Lots of blues, whites, and grays. And as we get into the Sharks, you're going to see a different color tone. He does the same thing with Hamilton. So right away, I was like, oh, well, like, this is Paul Tazewat, his best. This is why he was nominated for an Oscar. He just, he's able to tell story with color. It's amazing. It really is. And again, you see that with the Sharks, who are just, it is reds, it is yellows, it is like earthy browns. Beautiful. And... In an interview with Harper's Bazaar, Taswell said, I wanted for the Sharks to be reflective of men that were holding jobs. Though they definitely weren't wealthy, they were dressing in the best that they had. They wore tailored pants and shoes that were broken in, but more of a dress type as opposed to a sneaker. I was really trying to push them apart so that it was reflective of the community that they were coming from. Alongside that was the color palette. I kept the sharks in a warmer color palette, which felt remis which felt reminiscent of where they had come from and how they were recreating themselves in New York. So what you said about the colors is on point. Like coming from Puerto Rico, they still want to reflect the warmth and, you know, the color that they would have had back home here in gray, dirty New York and he really pulls that through. Um, and like he said, like he doesn't costume them really in jeans at all. I feel I feel like Bernardo in the beginning and maybe one or two other people are wearing like a very, very dark wash denim, but it does not come across as denim at all. And they definitely look <laughs> far more responsible and put together than the Jets do. Right. They have like a sophistication to them, a vibrancy to them. 
and like a warmth to the sharks that kind of makes you want to like lean onto their side. You definitely feel a little bit more comfortable with them. Um, but yeah, I also David Alvarez who plays Bernardo. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have not seen this man in anything before, but I was like, oh, hello, sir. Hello. Welcome to the broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I just, I'm a big fan of the sharks. I love their costumes. Just their costumes just make me feel warm. Um, and they're just someone I want to be friends with, but you know, I don't want to be in a gang with them, but I feel like they're fun to hang out with. Oh yeah. That, <laughs> let, let's just m- move on to the, well, actually we're not going to move on to the dance party quite yet, but did you see them dancing at that dance? <laughs> yes. <laughs> they are the people to hang out with in this movie. Right. But the person I want to hang out with is the legend, the icon, Rita Moreno, who returns to West Side Story, this time as a new character, Valentina. I just was talking to Elizabeth before while we were in the break, and she did not realize that Rita Moreno starred in original West Side Story. I did not know this. I didn't. Oh, it's such an amazing thing. She played Anita. So we have pictures of her with Ariana DeBose, who now plays Anita. It's just the sweetest, most magical thing. And I'm obsessed with it. And I love her. And she was so great in this film, too. She just brought such a, like, again, like a warmth to it. She did. And I love her character because she's kind of like, she's looking after Tony, kind of. And, like, trying to make sure he doesn't get into any more trouble but also just trying to, I feel like, protect her shop. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was say, like, she didn't really succeed in the Tony department. Um, no. <laughs> Tony is the architect of his own unhappiness, though. Right, right, <laughs> so, right, right. <laughs> um, But I love her because she, she is also Puerto Rican. But she says this because she married a white guy. A lot of the, you know, white community no longer see her as, like, being Puerto Rican and you kind of see that reflected in her wardrobe. It's a little, it's a little more Western, not does not really reflective of her heritage all that much though. I feel like you do see it in her floral top, um, which I thought was a really interesting move. Cause it's like, clearly she's been here for a very long time. Um, she's almost fully adapted to American culture and it's like it's not until she begins to speak that you realize she's kind of like straddling these two worlds. Right. She gives off like this like you know that elementary school teacher, that English teacher that you just yes. love who, you know, you're looking forward to their class cuz they're just home. That's that's who Valentina is in this film and uh I just love her. I'm so glad to see her do this. <laughs> it's been a long time since West Side Story. There I say what was it like 50, 60 years? I should fact check that. It's been a long time. Because the movie came out not long after the play. If I'm ready to dance. I think we're all ready to dance. And this is where you see Tazwell just being that master of color. Yeah, it's so fun. Once again, like you see the Jets wearing their blue, dark blues, grays, whites. But then the sharks, it's just reds and blacks and so vibrant, so colorful. It's just, this is such a beautiful scene. I mean, even for a second, you put the rivalry kind of aside for a little bit. It's just just so fun to watch and joyful, even though I feel like for the characters, they're not (laughs) experiencing joy, but I was. So (laughs) No, they're definitely trying to have a good time. Um, I love Riff and his girl, matching it up her dress is beautiful that that blue with like the little tassel detail going down the front of her skirt and the cutouts up top it's a great silhouette gorgeous yeah. it's beautiful and then his, his jacket and sure i was like i was unaware you could like dress up this nice riff like good job yeah i mean the, credit where credit's due <laughs> the jets really showed out for this dance you know i know i was not expecting that they were so dirty in the first part of the <laughs> i was like i didn't think they owned nice enough clothes to go to a dance right um uh, but we also get to see a lot more of tony and he's just been in jail for a year so his his clothes are much more simple like he's kind he's kind of got the the blue of the jets 
But he's paired it with like just these like tan pants, and he's just kind of like, I shouldn't be here. Until, of course, he sees Maria. <laughs> Tony's just trying to make it through today. He is, and he does not <laughs> succeed. No. Um, <laughs> but I also love Bernardo and Anita. Bernardo's wearing this fantastic, like, whitish tan suit with this, like, like rust-colored red T-shirt or button-down shirt. And then a tie with, like his necklace that complements the the suit. I was like, ooh, look at you. And then you have Anita with her like beautiful off the shoulder black dress. Oh, man. And then the red petticoat that just she shows every time she dances. Oh my gosh. I am obsessed with every single costume that Anita wears in this film. I mean, just every single one. You're like, wow, that's the one. That's the one. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like so good. And Ariana DeBose, like, she's so beautiful. She wears them all so beautifully. Uh, she did such a great job in this film. I mean, that's why she's she nominated did. for an Oscar for it. So, I mean, hey. Deserved. She was my favorite part of this, actually. Oh, by far. I <laughs> yeah. mean, she, to me, she carried this film. She was um, the only so. character making good decisions. So, <laughs> <laughs> Right. And I'm just, like, so happy for her. I don't know if you know, but she came from Hamilton as, like, one of the, like, ensemble kind of, like, background oh, wow. dancing, you know, singing characters. So, oh, that's great. Um, Like, good for her. She's killing yeah. it right now. She deserves this. She does. Oh, my goodness. That's awesome. Uh, another great actress was Rachel Zegler as Maria. And her first big scene is the dance scene. Where she wears that iconic white dress with the red belt. Oh, that's so good. I didn't realize how iconic it was until I saw it again all these years <laughs> later. I was like, that's the same dress. It's so good. <laughs> uh, it's just, I don't know, something about it. It just feels so right. Of course, it's white because she's like this kind of like angel just kind of like gliding onto the dance floor. She's very innocent and kind of vulnerable. Yeah, and Paul Taswell, he put a lot of thought into this look. He talked to Harper's Bazaar about it. He said, it was important to set Maria up as this young woman coming from Puerto Rico, trying to find herself and maturing into this new environment. The white dress is reflective of a confirmation dress. And then also, stylistically, it's something that her family has decided is appropriate for her to wear. With the addition of the red bell, that was one of the changes from the orig original productions. When Anita gives the belt to Maria for the dance at the gym, it's meant to be seen as a token of pleasing her and wanting her to grow and mature. It's like, he really thought this out. He really thought this out, and it shows. Right. It's, you know, it's very... Often that we see when people redo films, they never seem to like match a lot of the costumes, like, you know, detail by detail. But this is one of those like special occasions where we were able, we were able to pull from the older film and it like works so well. It made it more iconic to me. It really does. And it's like when you, when you look at them side by side, it's like, okay, they changed up the neckline and the sleeves a little bit and it's a different kind of belt, but otherwise it's like the same dress. <laughs> Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, I love it so much. It, it brings me so much joy. It was so perfect. And then, oh my gosh, the dancing. <laughs> I like. I wish I could have found out like how many dresses he had to pull and like how many doubles and stuff he had to have because these just this dance scene is insane. Yeah, the limit does not exist. I cannot imagine how many hours of like rehearsals and choreography went into this film. <laughs> oh my gosh, I know. And just like the dresses he chose and created, like they're perfect. Like they fit the dance moves perfectly. Clearly everyone can move in them without the slightest hesitation. Like I just can't imagine what it took to like figure all that out. Yeah, I mean, Anita's dress just like, it, it moves the entire film. There's just so much flow and it's just, it's so much fun to watch. And I love actually looking at, um, you know, this dancing from 2021 and comparing it to the original film. I, I really feel like Paul Tazel made some really great choices because the original film is lots of like 
cool colors as red, purple, blue, kind of whites, kind of like strawberry colors. And I, I like what they, what Steven Spielberg did with this new film so much more because it just feels so much more warm and vibrant and it feels more, I don't know, it just feels more realistic to me too. Like this just feels, yeah. it just, you know, it doesn't feel like a stage musical anymore. It feels like this is real life West Side Story. That was a big thing for them, making sure that it was believable. And like, if you went back in time and this was actually taking place, this is what the people would have been wearing. So that was realistic. It being realistic was very important to Paul Taswell and Steven Spielberg. Well, I'm exhausted from all that dancing. We just did uh, this. I think we should I know. We take should, a little we, break need, before things get serious. Yeah, need some Gatorade and <laughs> do some more stretching. <laughs> we'll be right back. Elizabeth, I rate it. Dance around in the street some more. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If it's with Anita, yes. <laughs> yes, I am. Well, you're in luck. I am in luck? Yeah, because the next scene is I want to be in America. Such a good, <gasps> such a good, good moment. I was so excited for this scene. This is really why I want to talk about this film. I want to see this scene. This is one of those songs that I did not realize was from West Side Story. <laughs> And I was like, I hear it start, and I'm like, hold on a second. <laughs> I know this song. <laughs> I know this song, and it's Anita and all her friends. And she's like, forget you, Bernardo. I want to be here in America, dancing around in my bright colors, and living uh, the life I want. <laughs> this is, to me, like the best part of the entire movie. If Steven Spielberg just released like this five ten minute scene i would have been like all right that's all i needed <laughs> you're like great <laughs> great applause we have to talk about anita's yellow dress because this to me i mean not to foreshadow what our our segment later but this costume to me just carries this film brilliant full of detail like the pleating in this dress from like just within the like the triangle cut out in the front of her dress like the movement that gives her and Taswell spoke about this scene to Harper's Bazaar because he was like he loves the you know iconic lilac dress from the original movie but he said I really wanted Anita to be like the sun to be the center of that community and to hold that kind of energy and exuberance that was then reflective of the rest of the neighborhood and it's like yes that is exactly what she is. Right. It's just, it's such a good, like, obvious choice to me. I mean, I'm so glad he went this direction. It's just, Anita just gives such a warmth and vibrancy and, you know, it's just so welcoming. I said this earlier. I just feel like the original film was just like, kind of like dark and cold. And this is what the film needed was like this yellow and reds, that red contrast in the petticoat, like, stop it. It's just beautiful. So good. When she, when Bernardo twirls her, I'm like, oh, yes. And I love even his little red accent. Yeah. In, in his shirt at this point. Like, it, he really brought everything together in this one scene. His costume, too. Like, that's my favorite male costume in this film. Like, oh, yeah. we're just seeing our two favorite costumes just being put together in this one segment. And it's just, it's so great. And the so many like extras in the background too, but like they're all costumed down to the gods, you know. It's just this is such an incredible, beautiful scene. It's so good. And the song's gonna be stuck in my head probably for the next two weeks. So I'm sorry, Elizabeth. And that's okay. That's okay. I can live with that. I can live with that. It's a good song. I stopped was... singing Enchanted, so you see, you just need something <laughs> to replace it. Yeah. <laughs> but on the same day, Maria and Tony also go on their <laughs> one and only date. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell Elizabeth's really into this romance. <laughs> 
Uh, I just wanted to touch on this a little bit because it's a very small part of the film. Um, but for Maria's outfit, Paul really put a lot of thought into it. He said to Harper's Bazaar, when we see Maria go on her date with Tony, the second outfit looks like a blouse she could have brought over from Puerto Rico. It's reflective of a traditional peasant blouse and has hand stitching that's lovingly done, similar to something that her mother or grandmother might have made in Puerto Rico. But then pairing that with a slim skirt makes it seem as if she's trying to appear more mature and moving away from the white dress that is keeping her in the box. And then when she adds a little red cardigan, she comes off as very intelligent Latin woman who has her own mind and is not afraid of expressing it. Wow, that's a that's a brilliant quote. I mean, what else do you say? <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like when you see it, it's like you, you don't immediately think of that, but when you like hear his explanation, it's like, oh my gosh, like that's that's why she she does seem much older in this scene. That like and that's why. Right. It's it's actually kind of funny because I feel like Maria aged up a little bit. She was more sophisticated. But then Tony, he kind of like aged down a little bit in what he was wearing. He, yeah. It's almost like he kind of like, you know, lost his cool a little bit. And now he's like this kind of school kid, possibly teenager. We don't know. Yeah. Uh, Maria <laughs> is the only person we know for sure is a teenager because she <laughs> says she's 18. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, let's get into another musical number though we have the i feel pretty scene and that's just such a fun scene this was such a fun scene when they're cleaning the department store Uh, i love how he continues to bring that vibrancy even into their cleaning uniforms the like bright red aprons over their very colorful clothing And it just, it gives the whole scene a sense of, like, fun and whimsy as she's, like, going through and dressing herself up in the store. Right. It's such a good point. I'm glad you said that because when I think of, like, you know, a maid type of costume, it's usually, like, pretty muted, like, maybe, like, a light blue, a gray, kind of boring and, you know. But, like, this, it's just, you kind of forgot for a second. You're like, oh, this looks fun. Like, I I want to be there too, you know, cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like this vibrancy is just like so positive and uplifting. It's just, it makes you feel something. And that's like the beauty of costume design. It really is. And it, it's the upper you need right before everything falls apart. Riff dies. Tony kills Bernardo for killing Riff. Maria's still in love with him for some reason. <laughs> And then Anita lies that that Maria's dead. So Tony is like, murder me too, and gets murdered, even though Maria is not dead. And then Maria almost murders everybody. And then it just ends. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel, Elizabeth. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the movie <laughs> it goes into a dark path very quickly. Um, there's lots of killings, lots of violence that I kind of forgot about, honestly. Mm-hmm. And then the film just kind of ended, and I realized that there wasn't a happy ending to this film. It really kind of caught me off guard. <laughs> I guess I should have prepared myself for that. but um, At least she made it out alive for this version. <laughs> right it was just like what's going on why why do we have to do this why do we gotta kill each other but i will say though like that rumble scene really came together beautifully the costumes that paul put together were just uh you know felt very real and then just kind of seeing like the progression of these characters like slowly falling apart and their costumes becoming more dark and gloomy with the turn of the plot yeah i i thought paul did masterfully 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 (laughs) yes yes he did especially with anita she goes from her bright bright colors to this morning black and purple and that just like reflects her grief and anger like she's not hopeful anymore because she became like unrecognizable like pretty quickly yes And then Maria, while she's sad, she's like, I'm still going to be with my man. And (laughs) she starts the day off or the night off, I guess, in this very beautiful, like, 
pink little nightgown. And then I love this final blue silk dress she wears. Because when you see her coming to Tony with her luggage, she looks so hopeful. She's like ready for the future. And then when Tony dies, it's like immediately turned into a mourning dress. Yeah. Like it just, it takes on those two different roles beautifully. Yeah. That's such a cool note. And just like seeing her like run down the street in that dress with like the briefcase. It's like such a, like you said, kind of like positive, hopeful silhouette that like took me off guard for a second. I was like, wait, what's she ha- so happy about? I was confused. And then, you know, things fell apart. She's running off with Tony for some reason. Yeah. I just, I don't know. Like, I'm sorry, you murder my brother. I don't care how much I love you. Things are over. <laughs> well, they didn't even like have like a solid conversation about it. That's what I was caught off guard by. Like when I he feel- got out of bed for a second and I was like, that doesn't look like his bedroom. And then she sat up. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, I feel like at some point they must have had a conversation about it. I guess. I would assume so. But, like, I'm sorry. You... Man, I've, I've had people break up with me for less than that. So. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that is West uh, Side Story. <laughs> a bit of a shorter episode today but you yeah. know just it was a longer films and longer films are a little bit harder for us to break down so we just really wanted to focus on the main costumes what was yeah. important yeah it's an almost three hour movie like if you want to watch this it is on disney plus just be prepared it is a long movie it's a commitment to watch this movie yeah, let, let's talk about it for a little bit before we get into one costume rule them all. Yeah, I'll just read this one quote before we finish off. But Paul Taswell kind of distilled his thoughts and feelings about this wardrobe very well in Harper's Bazaar. So I just want to share that. He said, that's the thing I love about being a costume designer. I'm designing to create a narrative that is unspoken. And I'm giving clues to the audience in, a, in subtle ways or in very bold ways, to give these characters definition so that it will all feel authentic. I hope it all feels true and plausible for the communities whose story we are telling. I also hope it touches people's hearts and that people remember the choices that I made and that this new version of West Side Story will remain in their heads that the new Anita and the new Maria will carry forward with this new way that we're presenting the story. That's actually a beautiful quote. And that's a perfect it's, way to end you know, where we're <laughs> at. It's, it's a very awesome quote. It's beautiful. And he, he, he did such beautiful work. I'm really happy he's nominated for an Oscar this year. He, he truly deserves it. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. I, I <laughs> let's talk about this film. I do feel like it was definitely a little too long, especially yes. considering the way it ended. Um, yes. I was like, oh, well, we we worked out a lot of details for no reason. Um, but I also didn't like hate it, though, either. Like, I liked the film. I didn't love it. I just feel like it was a little long. Yeah. But, you know, some standouts, though, was Ariana DeBose. Like, she deserves this nomination. She carried this film. Uh the actress who plays Maria, she was also brilliant. She was brilliant. The acting for the was brilliant. I questioned some of the accents, <laughs> especially for the New York, the the Jets. I was like, okay, but I agree with you. I had a lot of problems with how long it was, and the pacing of it was very. It was very strange to me. Aside from that, it, w- it was fantastic. I mostly, I just have personal issues with the story of, of Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> that That's a personal problem. <laughs> yeah. And you know, <laughs> like for me, like production design wise, costume design wise, directing, the casting, it was all great. For me, I guess what you're getting to the heart of for me, why I have an issue with this film a little bit is like, the Romeo and Juliet story, which, you know, has built this great production over all these years, which I respect and I do like it. Mm-hmm. Um, but like it really, this film for me kind of suffered from the casting of Tony, which we're not going to get into. Yeah. It was really hard for me to like get my head around this romance. It just, to me, 
it didn't sit well with me. And that's not to the fault of everyone else in this film. No, no. That's the main problem. So I've always seen Romeo and Juliet not as a story of star-crossed lovers, but as a cautionary tale. Right. When you think of like, you know, it was written and per- originally produced in Elizabethan England, where like, you know, if you didn't listen to your parents and marry who you were told to, there were serious consequences. <laughs> 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 like, I, I mean, I get why people are like, oh, it's so beautiful. Like... They loved each other, even though their parents told them they could never be together because their families hated each other. And it's like, this whole story takes place over max 72 hours. So, A, they were never in love. They were infatuated with each other. Like, that's different. (laughs) (laughs) And two, I just, I think if it was a story of star-crossed lovers, it would have ended a little bit happier. Because he had happy ending stories where the people who should not have fallen in love fell in love and get happy endings. So in my opinion, Romeo and Juliet is a cautionary tale, not a love story. So what you're saying is William Shakespeare, don't show your face around at this podcast right now. Cause we're going to catch you in the parking lot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I will say one, one thing I do like about adapting that into West side story is the star-crossed lover thing makes a lot more sense when put into the context of West Side Story. Right. I, I actually like the story more for West Side Story. I just wish, again, they'd taken a little bit more time to develop that romance. Because I'm like, even the original play takes a little bit more time to develop that romance yeah, than I felt I, like they had in this <laughs> film. <laughs> the pacing was weird for me. Um, but all in all... Before we get into one cost to rule them all, I'm glad we watched it. Me too. Everyone who was nominated deserves it. The cast, the cast, except one exception, was brilliant. And yes, I'm very happy that we watched this still. And let's get into one costume to rule them all. Yeah, the one costume to rule them all. Spencer, what was your choice? Elizabeth, what was your choice? (laughs) I think we had the same choice, Spencer. (laughs) It is Anita's yellow dress. That is just... Yes! That costume carried this entire film. As soon as I saw it, I basically, like, stopped taking tally of costumes. Like, oh, well, that's the one. But just costume is just vibrant. It's fun. It just... It just showed like the upgrade to West Side Story that happened here. It was just, to me, it says everything about the film why we love West Side Story. It's just, you know, I think this dress is a museum piece. It is. It it not only communicates everything that Paul Taswell was trying to communicate, but it really showcases his skills and his knowledge of what a dancer needs, how something needs to be constructed to dance, how it fits into the story, how it's going to look on the actress. Like, it really showcases his talent right because there's such a we didn't really talk about this a lot but there's such a different perspective when costuming for something that requires so much movement like Mm -hmm. a musical like hamilton or like you know a production like west side story it just takes so much more thought and dedication and craftsmanship yeah and paul taswell is one of the masters of this type of costume design and i'm so excited to see what he does next I'm so excited, too. And, like, I feel like we're going to see this dress a lot recreated. And it's going to look significantly different because it's going to be constructed much more simply than what he had to make. And I'm like, I just find that fascinating. Yeah, (laughs) it's brilliant. And that is West Side Story, Elizabeth. (laughs) Elizabeth, this has been fun. But we've witnessed a lot of crime on these streets. You know what I think we should watch next? What should we watch, Spencer? <laughs> we need to hit we need to head to the theaters and watch the new Batman with Robert Pattinson yes! and Zoe Kravitz. <laughs> the time has finally come. I am so pumped for this. I can't wait. Everybody, get your get your Batman mask, get your cat ears. <laughs> And join us next time. <laughs> yes, I'm so excited. Ooh. Um, and don't forget 
to please support us on Patreon. We have some great bonus episodes happening there. Um, we just released our Oscars episode, actually. And by the time this comes out, we might have, or it's coming up, our Lord of the Rings After Dark special for the Fellowship <laughs> of the Ring. It's a fun one. Lots of tequila and orcs happening. Don't forget to head to our merch store also and get yourself the Art of Costume Blogcast sweatshirt or t-shirts. Mine's on its way. I'm so excited to wear it with every <laughs> single outfit of every single day. I'm so excited. Uh, if you can't support us financially, that is fine. That is understandable. If you could give us a little like and follow wherever you listen and on Instagram, we would very much appreciate it. And if you really loved us, if you could leave us a little five-star text review on Apple Podcasts, that would be amazing. Everybody, have a fantastic week. Bye. The Art of Costume Blogcast is hosted and produced by Elizabeth Joy Glass and Spencer Williams. Our audio engineering and editing is done by Dan White. Follow us on Instagram at The Art of Costume Pod or visit theartofcostumeblogcast.com for all blogcast updates. If you want to support the show, go to theartofcostume.com slash podstore. Or you can head over to patreon.com slash theartofcostume for some bonus content. For more costume reviews, deep dives, and interviews, head over to theartofcostume.com, a blog dedicated to highlighting the best in costume design. Wait, what are we watching next week? Ooh, Is it Batman? I think it's Batman. Hold on. Because I had a good transition. Okay, let me bring that up. I think it's Batman. I am the Batman. I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you want to kill me, Joker? Yeah, it's Batman. All right.